Hi everybody. So I have a favourite saying. Complexity is a whole load of simplicity bolted together. And when you're thinking of machine design, whatever that machine is, then that's actually more useful than it might at first appear. Take a car, for example. A car is probably the single most complex machine for everyday use that we produce. It's thousands of moving parts all moving at the same time to perform the function of a car. But when you look at it, of course, it's not just a big bag of parts put together. It's actually broken down into subunits that are much more simple that perform a function and that function is clubbed together. So the wheel, for instance, the function of the wheel is to turn and carry load. When you look at the wheel, it's actually not that complicated in and of itself. It is a system still, it has an axle, it has bearings, it has brakes, it has attachments, it can be turned. These are all important functions of the wheel within the car and they're performed in the subsystem of the wheel and wheel hub. We get four of those put them together, suddenly we have a car that's stable. So, I am oversimplifying this, but when you look at an overall machine and the function that the machine must perform, it must be provided with certain subsystems that help that performance of the function. Now to break that down a little bit further to something simpler, I've been asked for absolutely ages to design a coil winder. A coil winder isn't as complex as a car, but it still follows the same principles. If we think what a coil winder has to do, well it has to wind a coil and that means turning that coil, feeding wire and moving backwards and forwards a little bit as the wire is fed to keep the coil neat. It must perform those functions or it won't be a coil winder. Additionally, we need to be able to know how many turns we're putting on that coil and so we need, need to be able to count that. Those functions must be performed by that machine for it to be an adequate coil winder. When we look at the functions that the coil winder must perform, then obviously it has to have subsystems to perform that. So for example, there needs to be some way to count the turns. And of course, we've made a turn counter for exactly that reason. Now we also need some way of moving a wire backwards and forwards so that it evenly lays the wire down on the coil. To do that, we need a subsystem that will reverse motion. So you can think of the machine as the overall function. You can think of the subparts of that function necessary to make it perform the task. And then the supporting mechanics that will perform that function. Of course, we have to put the whole thing together as a working machine and place those parts, but breaking it down into the subsystem that performs the functions necessary for the overall performance of the machine is really how to approach machine design. And of course, we've been doing exactly that in case you haven't noticed with our coil winder and we made a start on that with our counter. And now what we're going to do is look at the reversing bit of it because we do need to have that wire move up and down a little bit. Now we can do that in a whole host of ways and this is true of any function that you want to perform. There are always a million ways to skin any particular cat. You'll find that people have their favourite that they will always recommend but it's just a favourite they're recommending. Actually there are millions of ways of doing any particular job and half the time one is as good as another. Unfortunately, the other half of the time it isn't. Because every system that you put together is going to have pros and cons. It's always a balance. Engineering is a balance of things. When you put this thing together and it does a certain job, it will do parts of it extraordinarily well and parts of it as a bit of a clutch. And it just really is up to you about what you want to accept within your machine as a bit of a clutch. So when we look at reversing, for example, Quite a lot of reversing mechanisms, like the um, twisted screw for instance, are of fixed length. And if we want a coil winder that's variable, of course that's not much use to us. So if we used that, we'd have to have a winding mechanism where it wound a fixed bobbin of a fixed length, and that would be great, 
but it would only wind one type of coil. If we want to wind different types of coil, we're going to need some variety in there, somewhere being able to switch it for different lengths of winding. Now that's what I want, and so that's the choice I made. It does make the machine more complicated, but it does mean that I can actually produce different coils of different sizes. These are all just decisions that you make while you're deciding what machine you need to build. Now, of course, we could reverse it using electronic control. So something like latching and a hitch bridge would be pretty easy to do if we attached it to an electronic motor. I want a machine that either has one motor is hand turned, so one power source. Because of that, then I'm going to limit the amount of um, reversing mechanisms I can choose. But again, that's just a choice because I made a choice on the functionality of the coil winder before I started the project. So I want some kind of mechanical way of doing that where we're going to have an ability to change the length of travel before it reverses. Again, there are a million ways of doing this with everybody having their favourites, like this one, for example, based on sliding bevel gears. But then I came across this by Gesamtwald, which I thought was just elegant, actually. I loved it. Now, Gesamtwald promised to put up the uh, STL files, but he never did. I guess he got a bit too busy, so I had to reverse engineer this. And reverse engineering is the same approach as engineering in that you look at the function it's performing, what structures are put in place to perform that function, and you can work out how it was somebody built something. So I built a copy of Gesamtwald's uh, mechanism and did the SDL files, and of course they will be available in Tinkercad for anybody who wants it, and that's the completed mechanism. But we can break that mechanism down into its component parts. If we pull out those two, what those two do are interact with each other. And if I can turn one one way, of course, it will go one way. If I can turn it the other way, it'll go the other way. It will reverse, which is exactly what I want. So it has two large gears to do that. And then it's got two small gears that interact with this mechanism here. And this just flips over. And because it flips over and engages a third gear, so we've got gear one, gear two, gear three in there, then flipping that will reverse it. And then, of course, what he had was a slider mechanism because it flips because of the input. You're inputting it will just turn if it has nothing to stop it. And if he's got a little mechanism to hold it there. You move and then you turn it, you move the mechanism out of the way. It flips to the other side where it's held and then you turn it and it reverses the rotation. So that's how that works. And it's dead simple to put together. So I printed these parts and put them together. So that's it all together. When it's all together, the only other bit is this bit. This bit you'll notice is a flat bit and a hook. And that's because as we're turning that, we want to stop it going that way, which is what the hook does. When we move the hook, it will go there. And we want to stop it going too far. So that's what the flat bit does. So that goes in there. And there's a couple of guides that glue on there. And then we get our reversing gear. That means is the input is actually here where we can put a handle, a pulley, a cog, whatever it is you want to attach. And the output will, for me, will be a gear attached to here that is then linked to a threaded rod. So as that slide is in one direction, it will turn that way, driving the threaded rod and, of course, driving the guide. When we move the slide, this will automatically go the other way. And, of course, that will reverse direction and bring it back all with a little push rod on here, and that takes very little force to do it. Anyway, thank you very much to Gesamtwald for this mechanism. I've put a link to his video, the original video, in the description down below. And of course, I've put a link to the um, Tinkercad files uh, on Thingiverse, and that's also in the description down below. Now, there are a few things I might improve with this, but I wanted to show you the whole mechanism as Gesundvolt did it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.